I find Saint Laurent to be such an interesting brand because in the modern era, their entire identity, I think, has been almost entirely forged by one man, and that man is not the person currently designing for Saint Laurent. You see, the person currently designing for Saint Laurent is Anthony Vaccarello, and he's been there since 2017, a six, seven year run, which is very long in the luxury clothing space, but I really don't think you can say that he is the most important voice to the creative output of the house, because that person is named Eddie Slima, or Hedy Slimane if you're a charlatan, or Hedy Slimini if you're me, because, because that's what I call him when I'm feeling silly. Uh, but Eddie was there before Anthony Vaccarello, and I think it's hard to overstate just how big and influential and important Eddie Slamas Saint Laurent was. Even if he weren't paying any attention to fashion in that era that he was designing there, um, you're probably aware of his work because everyone copied it, even the cheap stuff, the H&Ms and Zaras of the world, they were all in the Eddie Slama business by, by ripping him off, of course. And I know that Anthony Vaccarello, the current Saint Laurent designer, uh, he definitely has his defenders. And I'm occasionally one of them, depending on how hard you want me to go. I will say that I like his work and I find his designs for Saint Laurent to be very appealing, very clean, and very flattering. But Eddie Slama, man, geez, that guy's important. Okay, all right, let's take it back. Let's talk about the whole point of this video. Let's run it back. I have two pieces from Saint Laurent today from two different eras. So first, I have got this pair of distressed studded jeans from 2016. That is when Eddie Slama was still at the house. I believe this is from his second to last collection this spring, 2016 collection. And then I've also got, reaching, reaching, I'm reaching, okay, I'll be back, this pair of shoes from uh, 2021 Saint Laurent, so that is now in the Anthony Vaccarello era. And I think there's stuff to like about both of these, but I wanna dive in a little bit deeper here. So where do you even begin with Eddie Slama? Let's go all the way back to the beginning. Um, his first outing at the head of a major house, like really coming out of this, I know he designed before, don't get on my butt about that. Dior Ohm in the early 2000s. Um, that I think is my favorite era of Eddie Slama. It is the like rock revival, white stripes, strokes, Franz Ferdinand, skinny black tie, skinny pants, blazers, suits era, right? And that was pretty much entirely him bringing that into vogue. And as someone who is a preteen into a teenager during his tenure there, his designs were everywhere. I was an avid reader of Rolling Stone and I feel like every single male artist at the time was wearing Dior Ohm on the covers of these magazines. So that was a smash success, and he parlayed that into leading Saint Laurent. And this one, um, do, could I say it's even bigger than Dior Ohm? I don't know, I think both huge in different ways. And here I'd say he really refined, he started branching out a bit, trying different elements, but still very skinny, denim, punk, that kind of vibe. Uh, I am particularly very partial to um, spring 2014. I really love that collection. It's got, you know, a kind of, um, you know, skinny punk vibe. And then also spring 2016, where these studded jeans are from, is another great punk influenced collection. But then Anthony Vaccarello came into Saint Laurent and I don't know, it was, it was a clean transition. Maybe that's the most charitable thing I can say because it seems like he really was a fan and into what Eddie Slama was doing at the house and wanted to just keep moving in that direction. And sometimes that would lead to things like the uh, spring 2019 collection, which, you know, look, it's clean, it's good, but it's got the skinny jeans and the animal prints and the yada, yada, yada. It was just very Eddie. I didn't feel a clear, concise, artistic voice. It felt more like an homage to Eddie than an original piece of work by Anthony Vaccarello. But if I had to d differentiate Vaccarello, I would say that he is uh, a bit more fond of the classic like Parisian 
luxury aesthetic. Um, a bit more flowy, a bit more tailored, a bit cleaner. I think if Eddie Slamont is like 70s New York, like the Ramones, uh, Anthony Vaccarello you can maybe describe as like 70s Hollywood. There's a little bit more like glitz and glam to it, but there's still shockingly similar. And I think that's the biggest knock I can make against Anthony Vaccarello is I don't fully know his voice in the absence of Eddie Slamont's voice. So where does that all leave us? Well, it leaves us with these two pieces. And I mean, I guess you could say it's kind of a negative that these two designers don't have clearly distinct voices for Saint Laurent. But the upside to that is that you can very easily mix and match pieces from these two designers' eras. So that's what I'm gonna try to do here. We have these studded skinny jeans and these insane shoes that you haven't even seen yet, but my God, are they good. So we will check out the details. We'll try them on, see how they feel, how they fit. And we'll try to make these two pieces from these two different designers at the same house work together. So let's dive in. All right, let's start with the jeans here from Eddie Slamont because we can start with my favorite designer first. I'm not gonna hide anything here and pretend it's this big mystery. I personally prefer Eddie Slama to Anthony Vaccarello. Uh, I just feel like there's more originality there, uh, which some people would definitely argue with, but we'll leave that for another video. But anyway, let's start with these jeans. The shoes are good too though, you just wait. I think out of these two pieces, they're actually the better piece but I just like Eddie more. Okay, that's enough preamble. Let's look at the jeans, jeez. So this is a beautiful pair of black denim jeans and clearly the element of like design here is the studding. So let's get right into it and look at those. So you've got some elements of just straight distressing that goes right through like a normal pair of like ripped torn jeans. But then you get these panels where you've got this studded uh, leather-like material underneath. And I've definitely seen this called leather. I'm actually not sure. Leather isn't listed on the um, the care tags as one of the materials. I think this is like a painted cracked cotton that's made to look like leather. But if you actually know, uh, please let me know. And I think just doing these studs in here, you know, it's fun in a kind of like classic hot topic sort of punk goth way. Uh, but I think one element that actually sets it apart is that he's chosen different types of studs on here. So you've got these squared off, kind of like classic belt triangular studs here. And then below, you've got these circular studs. So there is some interesting choices being made here, I'd say. So you've got these two panels of it at the uh, left leg here, and you've got one at the right that has these squared off ones again. And these are just as clean as can be, like you've got branded, metal hardware here, zip closure, which some people aren't a fan of. I get they don't hold up as well, but I strongly prefer a zip closure personally. You can see the fit, it's extremely skinny. You'll see when we put them on later as well. And also a bit of a low rise. You can see they naturally form like a V here coming down at the bottom of the waist, like at the pelvic area. And I think that makes for a really flattering cut metal hang tag, which they're always a fan of. These are the D02, a very classic cut of jeans from the house. And the back here is truly as clean as can be. While the front has a lot of interest going on, the back is a classic pair of black skinny jeans, really nothing more to report here. Inside these, to the right of that hang tag, you get the uh, model information, you know, men's skinny. LW, I think, is like a low waist, like low rise type of thing. Um, leather brand patch at the back here stitched in along this seam, which I love. And then the tags are way down at the side seam. We can see they're made in Italy. And one of my favorite things about Saint Laurent is that they put the year there. So out of all brands, it's so incredibly easy to tell if a piece is from Eddie Slama or Anthony Vaccarello because you've got the year right there. And if you know what years they were there, that gives you your answer right there. And they are a cotton and elastane blend. So these are just an incredibly wearable, um, like thrashed 70s, 80s punk hardcore piece, which is as far up my alley as it can possibly get. And a very clean encapsulation of the type of work that Eddie Slamont was doing throughout his time at Saint Laurent. And then we've got the shoes. And like I said, while I prefer Eddie Slamont as a designer, I think these are the more interesting piece of the two. So I'm so excited to check them out. We can see they're a size 43. What other information do we have here? Vitalino 
Corvara Nero Black. You've got the year right there, 2021. A little outline that's just starting to give you a taste. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. And then we can see the model number is Goth 15. So Goth definitely makes sense. I can see the, the Gothic influence in these and you will too. And 15, I actually wonder if that's a direct reference to Eddie Slamont because in his Saint Laurent 2015 collection, there were a lot of pointed toe shoes and boots, which these are as well. If it's a direct reference to Eddie Slamont, I would actually commend him for that. I, I appreciate him, you know, just owning up to the fact that, hey, I, I'm really just running with what Eddie started here. All right, let's get this box open. Nice clean box. It's got like a kind of texture to it, similar to kind of what Balenciaga boxes do in gray. Double dust bags here, and they are lined in white. Some nice ass dust bags. All right, moment of truth. Unboxing. Oh yeah. So, very strappy, very lacy. Open at the sides, closed at the front and back. Metal hardware, very nice light heel here. And then beautiful, tapered, pointed toe. These things are sick. So where to even begin here? Maybe we can, we can zoom in on the leather. I can smell it from here. It's such a nice natural leather smell. I love the type of like pebbled grain that they got here incredibly clean and looks great. You can see the light bouncing off it. That's a sick leather right there. There's a little slit at the front where the lace goes through. So you've always got a lace going across the top, kind of like keeps things in place, which I appreciate. Beautiful curve to the sole, very thin sole right here. And then stacked leather down at the heel, a nice light heel. That's maybe, what would that be? Uh, three quarters of an inch, I would say. And then this single seam down the back you get a lot of lace here. There's a ton of lace just kind of stuffed in there because what happens is it goes through all of these bits of metal and then just kind of wraps around over and over until there's enough to tie it with. It creates such a nice look. Down at the bottom, you can really see the point from that sole. Saint Laurent Paris, made in Italy, size 43, and you've got tons of really nice clean nails for the heel there. Very professionally made, I would say. I would hope so, right? You've got a really nice leather counter here, kind of turned into suede at the back. Gold Saint Laurent print at the bottom at the insole. And I love how big this upper is that goes over the front. It, it would be a boot if not for the cutout. It's like a Chelsea boot shape with just a missing elastication at the sides, which I find so interesting. And then inside the tongue here, you get all of the proper model information. It's such nice, supple leather. Like the way it just bends and moves when I do that feels so good. So yeah, I've got to hand it to uh, Vaccarello here. These are maybe my favorite shoes I've ever seen out of him. They're stunning in my opinion. All right, big fan of both of these pieces. I'm psyched on where this is heading, but now we've reached the time to try them on. And we're gonna need more clothes than this to put together fits. And I think what we have to do is we have to have uh, dueling fits here, because we have one piece here from each designer, Eddie and Vaccarello, and I think we can make two looks. One could be a Anthony Vaccarello forward look. One could be an Eddie Slama forward look. I've got enough pieces to put together both, so let's do it. All right, so we've got our jeans, we've got our shoes, boots, whatever you want to call them. So now I think we just need tops and outerwear. So for our Eddie Slama look, I've got a couple of Celine pieces. We can use a white Celine t-shirt. I think that'll pair really well with the black. And then going back to black, we have this actually kind of insane uh, sample jacket from, I believe it's his, it was his first uh, Celine runway show. I love this piece. So that's our Eddie look. And then our Anthony Vaccarello look is gonna be a little bit more clean. So our top is going to be this striped sheer uh, quarter button down short sleeve, crazy, right? Uh, in silk from I believe uh, 2019 by Vaccarello. And the one thing is I don't have outerwear from him. So instead I just picked something out that I think is a little bit more clean and tailored while still retaining that kind of uh, punk influence, 70s influence. So we have this, I don't know what you call it, like a moto blazer 
from Raf Simmons. And I think this will all pair well. The thing I'm most curious about here is how the gold pairs with the silver studs. That's the one thing I'm worried about, but we shall see. So let's get started throwing these on, starting with the Eddie look. All right, let's start off with the Eddie look here and get these on one by one. So first, fittingly, we gotta put on the Eddie studded jeans. Get these on. I love the look of these. I love a pair of skinny jeans. I love black denim and obviously studded punk styling. I have literally zero to complain about here. So now we gotta finish out this look with our two Celine pieces. We've got the white Celine t-shirt. Looking good, no complaints here. I love how thin and drapey this is. Then we gotta move on to the Anthony Vaccarello goth 15 shoe boots, open side boots. Let's get these on. These are really interesting. Uh, they kind of lace multiple times over the upper and then also lace multiple times around the ankle. So once I get these up, I can see that uh, the jeans come down too far for these. So I'm gonna cuff these jeans up and now I know that either cuffed pants or just naturally crop pants are probably gonna work best with these shoes. So that's good info to have. And then we've got the strong leather shouldered uh, jacket from Celine. And now this is a complete look. This is exactly the type of look that I would go out in, feel good, feel confident. It's obviously a very like eddy, skinny fit. Even this outerwear is quite skinny as well. But I'm digging this. I like everything about this. I think this is versatile. I could wear, especially these jeans, I could wear, I could come up with hundreds of looks right now based on just what's in my closet. These will work with essentially anything. I like how they move. Uh, it's a couple percent elastane as we saw in the fabrication for the jeans. So they've got a nice little amount of stretch here. And while they are tagged to size 29, they actually fit a bit bigger. It's a bit vanity size. I would say these really measure probably between 30 and 31 inches at the waist. So when you're thinking about sizing, that's something to consider. So yeah, another Eddie win. I'm all about this. But now moving on to our next look, we've got to take off the Celine pieces and move on to our Vaccarello, our still kind of like punk, but cleaner, more tailored look. So first is this golden black striped silk shirt. This thing is insane. I, I keep this in my closet for kind of special occasions. It's also kind of sheer, which makes it a bit tough to wear, but we won't talk about that. You know what I mean? Okay, getting this on, I love the way this feels. And I was scared about the, the gold mixing with silver, but as long as you're not a stickler about that, I think it does legitimately look good. And now moving on to the jacket. Again, we don't have a Vaccarello jacket. So we've got this clean uh, Moto blazer from Raf Simmons and all this. You can see it's instantly elevated. It feels a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit less uh, outwardly punk in a way. But I like this. I feel confident in this. It, it's like a, a still a casual look thanks to the jeans, but when you get these very kind of like classic, almost like Pilgrim-esque shoes with uh, a more tailored type of top and then silk, it's a very upscale kind of fabric. Suddenly it just feels like a slightly more professional look in a weird way. And that's what I really like. I think both of these have really, I don't know, laid out the differences between these designers and where they're coming from. There's so many similarities. They're so similar, but Eddie is more authentically rock and roll, I think. And Vaccarello kind of puts that on a little bit, but really is more of a kind of like fashionista at heart. You know what I mean? So I'm super psyched to throw both of these pieces into the rotation. I think there's tons to appreciate from both of these designers, but man, Eddie will always have, have my heart. Eddie always looks good, at least on me. You gotta respect it. All right, that's the video. I'm a big fan of both of these. I think these are both gonna slot right into my wardrobe really well. I'm gonna start wearing them essentially immediately. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Take a look at the other video on screen here. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time.